Palm oil was supposed to fight climate change and help save the planet, but instead it led to an environmental catastrophe of epic proportions with global consequences. If you're unaware, palm oil comes from fruits that grow on 60 feet tall trees that thrive in wetland soil, common in lowland tropics such as Indonesia. It has become an essential ingredient in a lot of the products we use every day. It's found in chocolate, shampoo, ice cream, even pizza dough. It's also used to produce biodiesel, which is fuel for diesel engines made from vegetable oil. This seemingly magical tree that produces up to nine times more oil than any other vegetable oil crop comes with a heavy price. We can see it today in the alarming acceleration of deforestation, ecosystem decline, and biodiversity loss. To better understand the gravity of the situation, we need to go back to 2007. That year saw the United States draft new laws that encouraged the use of vegetable oil in fuels. The plan was to scale down America's dependency on foreign oil, reduce CO2 emissions, and halt global warming. The new proposal by then-President Bush had sought to transform the transportation sector within 10 years by replacing 20% of all the gas and diesel burned with fuel made from plants. Despite the well-meaning intentions, these policies were based on incomplete data of the real environmental costs and had the opposite of their intended effect. Well, first of all, an increase in biofuel production would require a huge amount of additional arable land and cropland had already consumed virtually every arable acre across the Midwest. That meant outsourcing food production to some other country that has available land. But here's the thing. Using available land in other countries means cutting down entire forests to make way for arable land. Doing so meant releasing as much as 45% of the planet's carbon stored on land back into the atmosphere. However, against all the warnings, the EPA calculated that switching to biofuels would stop the release of 4.5 billion tons of carbon over three decades. The bill passed in December 2007, and American production of biodiesel spiked by as much as 500%, jumping from 250 million gallons in 2006 to more than 1.5 billion gallons in 2016. The U.S. also started importing as much as 100 million gallons a month. To make matters worse, the food industry also switched from using soy to palm oil because it was cheaper and just as good. The new supply came largely from Malaysia and Indonesia, which supply as much as 90% of global demand. Banks in Indonesia began granting loans worth $8 billion to support developing projects related to palm oil and officials pledged to produce 5.9 billion gallons of biofuel within five years. In the process, Indonesia would see more than 13 million acres of forests converted to industrialized palm production. From 2007 to 2014, palm oil plantations had more than tripled in the Indonesian part of Borneo. One of the biggest Indonesian companies, Bumitama, was planting roughly 37,000 acres of palm each year. Across Indonesia, trees were cut down at a rate of three acres every minute to make room. The largest corporations in the region used their power and wealth to acquire more land to produce oil, and the cycle repeated. With so many forests cut down to make way for palm oil production, it was clear that ethanol wasn't going to benefit the environment. It would instead double the CO2 emissions of conventional fuels. The EPA later revised its calculations and concluded, that it would take 32 years before biodiesel from soybean oil was truly net zero for carbon on an annual basis, and a century for it to reach the level of benefit required under the law. It also found that biodiesel made from Indonesian palm oil makes the global carbon problem worse, not better. The World Agroforestry Center found that peatland-based biodiesel could produce nearly four times the emissions of petroleum diesel. But the agriculture industry countered these findings with their own privately funded research, and business went on as usual. The easiest and fastest way to cut down a forest was using excavators to uproot the trees and then torch what remained. The fires in Indonesia in 2015 were so bad that NASA officials said they were the worst fires they'd ever observed. The smoke was seen as far away as Singapore and the Thai Islands and tens of thousands of Indonesians were rushed to hospitals for suffering from the effects of smoke inhalation. Researchers at Columbia and Harvard later estimated 
that the fires led to 100,000 premature deaths. And the destruction doesn't stop there. It continues underground long after the fires above ground have been put out. The dried and exposed peatland soil, which holds huge amounts of carbon, would continue to burn for a long time, months, maybe years, releasing more CO2 into the atmosphere than those from the rainforest deforestation itself. Indonesia's peatland destruction at this point in time is roughly the equivalent of opening 70 large coal-fired power plants, emitting more than 500 megatons of CO2 each year. If you thought things couldn't get any worse, a research in 2015 found that oil palm trees have a limited commercial lifespan of 25 years. Once this period has ended, the plantation is cut down and replanted, as older trees start to become less productive and are difficult to harvest. A newer research in 2019 concluded that this replanting might be causing a second wave of biodiversity loss, further damaging the environment where these plantations have been created. This replanting is no small undertaking. 13 million acres of palm oil plantations are to be uprooted by the year 2030, an area nearly twice the size of Scotland. In Southeast Asia, the conversion of forest to oil palm plantations has already caused declines in the number of several charismatic animals, including orangutans, sun bears, and hornbills. Globally, palm oil production affects at least 193 threatened species, and further expansion could affect 54% of threatened mammals and 64% of threatened birds. Palm replanting promises further significant declines in the biodiversity and abundance of soil organisms. According to researchers, the soil where palm replantation occurred had nearly 20% less diversity of invertebrates, such as ants, earthworms, millipedes, and spiders. They also found that second-wave mature oil palm trees had 59% fewer animals than the previous crop. This drastic change could have severe repercussions for soil health and the overall agro-ecosystem sustainability. Without healthy, well-functioning soil, crop production suffers. It is likely that replanting drives these declines. Prior to replanting, heavy machinery is used to uproot old palms. This severely disrupts the soil, making upper layers vulnerable to erosion and compaction, reducing its capacity to hold water. This is likely to have a negative impact on biodiversity, which is then further reduced due to the heavy use of pesticides. The planet's forests have the potential to sequester as much as a third of the carbon in the air. Right now, deforestation globally contributes 15% of the planet's total emissions, the same as all the cars and trucks and trains across the globe. On paper, biodiesel is a way to make all those modes of transportation produce less carbon. But in reality, that calculation is far more likely to lead to catastrophe.